Is this market bubble about to pop? Is the market gonna crash or is it gonna skyrocket and continue to produce returns that we haven't seen in a long, long time? My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design and today I wanna to talk to you about the mortgage situation. What's going on, the forbearance and Joe Biden's mortgage relief program. What is that going to do? How does that benefit you? How does that benefit all of us as a country too? What do we do in response to COVID-19 and the mortgage situation? So I wanna jump into some data here that I got some great points. Look, the Mortgage Bankers Association data says that we have about 2.5 million people that are utilizing the for mortgage forbearance that's happened since the CARES Act took place and being able to help us with the COVID relief. And so uh, what I'll say around that is a lot of people believe that all of those people who are in forbearance are going to create foreclosures and therefore it's going to create this huge market of foreclosures and the market's going to crash and it's going to be doom and gloom but let me just say this that in this um, mortgage bankers association data only five percent of those loans are delinquent or those forbearance uh, applications are actually delinquent that means behind on their mortgage based on the data that they collect. And now there's some different numbers I'm gonna share with you, but they're all in some sort of ballpark range, right? Because in 2008, let's just put this in perspective. In 2008, when the market crashed, there was 861,664 families that lost their home, right? And that was up 81% higher than 2017, or 2007, should I say. And so if you look at the numbers, 5% of 200 and, or 2.5 million people who are in forbearance now, 5% of that is 163,000 roughly. And so based on that, you're looking at, there's a, there's a, what's that difference? It's about 14%, I think it's somewhere around 14% is a difference from 2008 to, well, what could happen if that data is right at 5%. Now you gotta look at it like this. This is the way I think of it, right? And how this is gonna affect you, how this is gonna affect all of us. The forbearance, you don't need to prove anything, right? You just gotta tell them how you're having a hardship and what's going on. And they pretty much grant you the forbearance, right? And I think it's every three months you gotta reapply for it, but you could do it for a year or up to 15 months, I believe, that you can have the forbearance. Now, here's the deal. People out there, if you were, and I don't know what economic situation you're in, maybe you're in a hardship and this is a great program for you. You just tack those payments on at the back end, which is awesome. But if you have, if you're doing pretty well, but you wanna get ahead, if you have a $2,000 a month mortgage, let's say, you can tell them that you're in forbearance, take that $2,000 and go invest it in cryptocurrency or in the stock market, which is doing well right now, and you could make money on your money. And then when the forbearance is over, you can start continuing to pay your payment back and you've made money, right? And of course, you're gonna to have to pay those monthly payments back on the back end. But the thought process is a lot of people are just taking, and this, again, this might be true, this might not be true, I don't know. But you gotta think, most of those people probably aren't in a dire need situation. The 2.5 million people aren't in a dire need situation. And let's be honest, if you look at the market, we're up 20% year over year, and in some cases even more, especially where I live in Idaho, it's like, it's climbing rapidly. But a lot of people have equity in their homes. So why would they foreclose if they have equity in their home? They wouldn't, they could refinance or they could sell their home. They, they could do so much. So why would they ever do that? And I wanna share with you a little bit more information here. So the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Bureau to help these homeowners, right, in this situation of what we're doing with the mortgage forbearance and how it's gonna be coming to an end here soon, at least under the CARES Act what, what, with the deadline. What they're proposing, a new rule, is just for this temporary foreclosure uh, period, what they want to do is essentially block the mortgage service uh, lenders and from them being able to start taking homes into foreclosure, 
by the end of the year, December 31st, 2021. So they wanna say, hey, you can't put people in the foreclosure process until the end of the year, which is awesome. I mean, again, if you're a homeowner, you're getting bailed out, especially if you're having a hardship. But even if you're not, you're just someone that's like, hey, I wanna take advantage of this situation, and you wanna be able to take your monthly mortgage and invest it and get a great return right now, oh, it's a killer time to do that. <clears throat> So um, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is trying to prevent this massive foreclosure spree because what that's going to do to the economy is going to tank it. It's going to have a multiple financial implications, the big ripple that's going to happen. Look at what happened in 20, uh, 2008, what happened there. And so um, what, they're, what the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau with their industry data says is that there's about... 3 million people, homeowners that are behind on their mortgage. Nearly 1.7 million borrowers will exit the for, uh, forbearance program in September if we are not extending it till the end of the year. Now, if that's true, and that in September, we could see that, how, you gotta ask yourself, how many people are really in a position not to pay, right? How many people are in a position not to pay? And if you look at over the last year, since you know what happened with COVID happened, banks have gotten really restrictive on who they lend to. I think the average credit score is now like 790 when it comes to applying for a, lo a loan and a mortgage and getting a mortgage accepted. We're getting high quality. Um, we're getting high quality and uh, qualified lenders, or excuse me, borrowers that are actually getting their loans approved. So it's they're, they're tightening up the process of who can get a loan. And since inventory is so low, there's a lot of competition out there. And look, a lot of people aren't worried about the competition because let's be honest, if you could get a 2.5% or 2.875% right now, or even a 3% right now for the next 30 years, that's cheaper than where we think rates will be in the next three to five years, which is probably going to be at 4.5%, maybe even 5 to 5.5% max. Depends on where we go. But what we're looking to do or what the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is recommending is that we actually extend this program. And I want to share with you in a moment some ridiculous information that is proposed and what Biden is Joe Biden's per, uh, proposing on how do we help protect homeowners and we don't go into this market crash. So um, going back to the numbers, 3 million homeowners are behind on their mortgage and estimated 2.1 million mortgages are in for forbearance. That's different than the Mortgage Bankers Association data. So um, where they're getting their numbers, we'll see. Um, but and these 2.1 are that are in forbearance are at least 90 days delinquent. And so um, if that trend continues, there may be 1.7 million such loans in September 2021. So that is a quite interesting data uh, that they just threw out there. But I, you got to ask yourself, what do you believe is going to happen? Or do we really have that many people? The, the country is opening back up. Yeah, there's some precautions, but a lot more jobs went online. A lot more jobs are coming back to the table. Restaurants, bars are opening. People are getting back to work. <clears throat> so, and preventing foreclosures helps these homeowners and the communities. Uh, the foreclosures ex are expensive for homeowners, it says, with an average cost of borrowers of at least $12,500. Neighboring homes will also lose value if we go into this foreclosure spree. Uh, sales price dropping 1 to 1 and 1.6% nearly after foreclosure sales. Um, and then it goes on to say families endure uh, the foreclosures are likely to suffer other financial implications, which is absolutely true some distress that the family's going to have obviously uh with you know going delinquent having a foreclosure not being able to get in to rent a home potentially having the down payment or the upfront payments who knows it could be a, a a lot more challenging times but anyway i just wanted to just share with you guys that if you think about this that the equity is going up in people's homes so if they're taking for the forbearance and they're actually having a hard time, well, when they know whether it's September or the end of the year, if they don't have a job, if they can't make their mortgage payment or be able to you know, meet that expectation, 
they could just sell. Homes are selling like hotcakes and for overpricing. I know where I live, we've had some friends, a client of my wife's, she came in, bid $20,000 over asking price. Someone bid $38,000 over asking price from her. Absolutely bonkers and it was accepted. Another time they came into town to buy a home, <clears throat> Someone bid $150,000 over asking price with a five-day close as is buy. So look, this market is highly competitive. If you can't afford your home anymore because you lost your job, you can't find a job for whatever reason, people could sell. They really could sell and make a buttload of money even having bidding wars, depending on where you are in the condition of your home, right? So if... If the home prices are up, you gotta think, they're not gonna foreclose, that doesn't make sense. They could sell while they're in their forbearance period and get their money and run and never attack their, hit their credit or anything like that. They can have success by just selling. So are we in a crash? I don't see any indicators coming that we're gonna be in a crash. In fact, the feds went out of their way to say that they're not going to raise interest rates, which is really great for a lot of people. They can get money a lot cheaper. And who knows, as time goes on, we may see the banks loosening up their credit restrictions. Uh, I just don't see rates going up right away, at least not what the feds say. If the feds are staying true to their word, we're gonna have cheap money for you know at least this next year, and which means more people are gonna want access to buy, and since there's low inventory, the prices are gonna skyrocket. And so that's my thoughts. You might have different thoughts, you might have different indicators to show. I'd love to hear it, comment below, but I just don't see, unless something catastrophic happens and the feds raise the rates drastically right away, you know, um, I just don't see the market crashing anytime this year. If anything, it might be at the end of the year if we only go to December 31st and then we allow that forbearance period to end. And the people who can't pay it back, well, if they don't go and sell ahead of time, well, <clears throat> even if they don't sell, they could still house hack. And if you don't know what house hacking is, it means you own the property, you're, you're liable for the payment, you just rent out rooms. You could rent out your place, have someone pay your mortgage for you and you go find something else if you don't wanna sell. Or you could rent out rooms to cover your mortgage. So that's a whole nother strategy. We don't have to go into this whole foreclosure market spree where the market crashes and then there's huge financial ripples and implications. I, I just don't see that happening right now. Again, I'm open to being wrong, but just based on what I'm seeing here, it's not like 2008. And you know that was a whole nother thing in 2008 because if you think about it back then, they were just giving loans away, not money. They were just giving loans away, which is money, but they were giving loans away without qualification. You didn't even need to have a job to go get a $3 million property in uh, Southern California. Like it was just bonkers for that. So a lot of restrictions happened uh, since then. So banks started tightening up. You're getting well-qualified buyers right now. So you're not just getting people who are on that fence. Could they really pay it if something was to happen? No, you got people who are paying 25% down, 30% down, their credit score is great, their income's you know, through the roof on what they're actually making on a monthly basis or what they have in their savings or their 401k or retirement fund. So I just, right now, I don't see it. My personal opinion is, <clears throat> I think the rest of 2021, we're going to see the market skyrocket. Unless feds raise the rates, we're gonna see the market boom, the market crash, the market bubble. I don't see it happening. The people who are speaking this doom and gloom, well, they're the ones that are just looking at, hey, we have 3 million people who are in forbearance right now. 2.1 of those um, those forbearance mortgages are 90 days late. So that means everyone's going to you know, go into foreclosure. I don't see that happening with the equity that are in the homes, with the opportunities of, the, of uh, jobs coming back into play as we open our country up more cautiously, obviously. I just... I don't see it. You could house hack, you can rent out your place. I just, I don't see it. So those people who are speaking doom and gloom, yet are speaking on the numbers, but it doesn't make sense. A lot of people are probably taking out the forbearance, even though they could afford it, they're just not going to pay it and they're gonna hold that cash just in case because why not? You don't have to do it, you just apply. Now, I haven't done that. I'm just I'm just paying my mortgage. I'm okay with that. But you got to ask yourself, do you really think it's going to crash? And if so, what is it? What's going to cause the market to crash? Otherwise, I see these, you know, these I can see the market going up, skyrocketing up, you know, another 10 to 15% by the end of the year. 
So I don't know. You got to ask yourself that question. How does that affect you? Well, if you're if you don't own real estate, well, it's hard to buy right now. It's really hard to buy right now. It's so competitive that you're not going to be able to get a home and <clears throat> It's going to be a homeowner's market because we're just getting bailout after bailout after bailout and the renters, they're not getting anything. Yeah, they don't have to, you know, with COVID-19, they had it where they didn't have to pay rent in certain states for a while, um, but the renters aren't getting anything good from this. The mortgages, the uh, people who own the properties and have the mortgages, they're getting bailed out. Oh, here's a fun fact too. Biden is proposing up to a 40 year repayment for your mortgage. 40 years, like how crazy is that? Most people will be dead before they get to pay off their, that mortgage, right? <laughs> Even if you're in your early 20s and you buy a house, I don't see someone actually staying in their house for 40 years. People do do it, but the average loan is around seven years. So I don't really see that happening, but could you imagine you get a house at 20, 21, and then you got 40 years of paid off? You're in your 60s, that's crazy. That's just crazy, but that's what Biden is pro uh, proposing in hopes that can be pushed through to help with the support for people who are in hardships around their mortgage and you know that are in this forbearance period that they're taking advantage of. And I say taking advantage of in a good way, right? So you gotta ask yourself, what's gonna cause the market to crash? Or do you see keep going forward? And I see keep going forward. So you know, when was the best time to buy? March maybe even a little bit before March, <laughs> but <clears throat> we can't go back in time. So if you're looking for, and you got to look for a good deal, there's deals out there, you know, people with wedge deals, people who are in hardships, you might be able to help support them and getting out under it. But if you can find wedge deals, great. There's, it's just a little bit more challenging nowadays to get property uh, at such cheap money. But if you can do it, I highly recommend it moving forward. I'm looking for more properties. It's not easy, especially in my market here in Idaho. So you gotta see what's around you. Who do you know? Who can you network with? What do you need to do to get on that? So look, hope this helps. We'll see where this is going. Is, the, is what Biden proposes, is what the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau proposing going to help and get approved and be able to help people moving forward? And if it does, it's great for those in hardship again but it's going to be a long time before we see a crash or at least not this year. So I don't believe we're going to have a market crash. I believe we're going to continue to go to the moon. These prices, they're absolutely bonkers. I wish I wanted to sell my house right now. I just have no desire. I love where I live. I love my place. So you got to figure out what you need to do for you. But hey, anyway, if you guys found value in this video, hit the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to these videos, this channel. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Turn on your alerts because look, we're here to put out three videos a week in personal development, business and finance, which this video obviously affects you if you're looking to get ahead financially and relationships and so we're going to be touching on all those topics we have go ahead and watch some of the other videos in this with that love to hear your comments on what you th think is going to happen with the market going into the second half of the year um, even with COVID going on and with the vaccines and everything taking place so let me know love to hear it I'm Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design have a great one see ya